Well, the rolling GOP meltdown that began with the party's humiliating speaker vote keeps getting crazier. Two members of Congress, Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene, reportedly got into a shouting match in a bathroom. Serial liar George Santos is facing calls from his own party to resign. And just in time to cool things down, Donald Trump is reportedly getting ready to rejoin Facebook and Twitter. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Back in November, Republicans delivered one of the worst performances for an opposition party in decades. And after the results came in, they all started turning on each other and surprisingly on Donald Trump. Donald Trump you know, kept saying, you know, we're going to be winning so much, we'll get tired of winning. I'm tired of losing. I mean, that's all he's done. Look, I don't think he's, he can win in, 20, in November of 24. Trump is the past. He's fading fast. He's a proven loser. He cost us the House in 18. He cost us the White House in 20. He cost us the Senate again and again. And I think we all know that, and I think we're moving past Trump. First of all, it should be easy to move past Trump since he moves at the speed of a glacier smoking pot in a windstorm. Remember when he used to lumber around the debate stage like a zombie who <laughs> forgot what he was supposed to be doing? I was just in the middle of something. What, what, oh, right. Eat brains. Even when he was the president of the United States and he actually had important places to be, he just wanders slowly in circles <laughs> like a guy with a metal detector on the beach who then lost the metal detector. This is why, this is why you need the second metal detector. <laughs> the metal detector detector. <laughs> Trump is somehow both extremely slow and also incapable of standing still. At least when Joe Biden finds himself wandering aimlessly, he freezes in place. <laughs> Try to figure out what he was supposed to be doing. He just freezes like a possum that turned on the motion sensor lights in your driveway. You guys uh, move the garbage cans? <laughs> All right, well, let's see here. We're just starting our closer look, and that's, uh, let's see, that's Trump at the debate, that's uh, Trump wandering on the lawn, and that's uh, Biden freezing on the stage, and as we call it here at Late Night, Triple Classic Vids! Triple Classic Vids! <laughs> Also, it's nice that Republicans finally learned how to hurt Trump's feelings. Just call him a proven loser. It's one thing to call him a loser. Anyone can do that. But proven loser is a nice turn of phrase. It's like something they put on a bottle of Trump-branded diet pills. <laughs> that said, the last person I want to hear from right now is this guy, Paul Ryan. You guys remember him, the guy who looks like if Eddie Munster worked at the Heritage Foundation. <laughs> He was Speaker of the House for the first two years of Trump's presidency and happily joined forces with Trump whenever it was convenient for the GOP. Sorry, you just don't get to dump Trump now. You know, that's just easy for you now. That's like taking Tom Brady off your fantasy team this week. <laughs> You're not brave, dude. So Republicans are turning on Trump and declaring unequivocally that Trump is in the past, which means it's the perfect time for Trump to come back to Facebook and Twitter. Mounting a comeback for the White House, former President Donald Trump is preparing a return to his Facebook and Twitter accounts. With access to his Twitter account restored, Trump's campaign is formally petitioning Facebook's parent company to unblock his account there after it was locked in response to the U.S. Capitol riot two years ago. Trump's team is reportedly planning his return to Twitter and even workshopping what his first tweet will be. That's right, Trump's staff is supposedly workshopping ideas for his first tweet. Did you guys forget how his tweets work? No matter how insane, they were immediately lost to history when he wrote his next tweet. <laughs> this tweet is the craziest I've ever read. Hold up. This new tweet is the craziest I've ever read. Hold up. But I think it's great that Trump's team is sitting around workshopping ideas for his first tweet. I hope they're really burning the midnight oil and taking weeks to craft the perfect message that will appeal to voters across the political spectrum, do extensive market research, test it with audiences, rewrite it, proofread it, and then present it to Trump just so he can say, this is great, fellas, but I'm gonna go with crooked Hillary witch hunt email style. <laughs> it's so, it's so sad they had to put a second D on it. Now, if this is true, the timing of Trump's return could not be worse for the GOP, given that they're already at each other's throats. And Trump forcing himself back into the spotlight will only make it worse. Trump is not who you bring in to de-escalate the situation. He would be a terrible hostage negotiator. I don't think you have the guts to kill them. Let go. <laughs> it's my bullhorn now. You guys brought me in. <laughs> GOP infighting has gotten so bad, even one-time allies are now 
bitter enemies like Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene, who were once friends but were on opposite sides of the speaker fight. Boebert and Greene reportedly got into a heated argument in the bathroom at the Capitol while all of the drama of the speaker vote was going down. New details of a bathroom brawl in the middle of the speaker fight. According to the Daily Beast, Marjorie Taylor Greene, once a staunch critic of the Republican leadership, was in a near fight in the middle of the marathon vote. Greene reportedly screaming at her colleague and former friend, Lauren Boebert, a McCarthy holdout, in a bathroom right off the House floor. Well, I guess that answers the riddle. What's worse than Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert fighting? Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert fighting in a room with an echo. Do you know who I am, 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 am? Marjorie Taylor Greene does strike me as the kind of person who would wait in a bathroom stall until she overheard someone talking about her, then just kick open the door like a cowboy busting into a saloon. Oh, you think I'm a lot? <laughs> so that's where we're at right now. The GOP is embroiled in a messy and very public civil war, and to make matters worse, they also have to deal with the fallout from a truly head-spinning scandal involving yet another one of their disgraced members, a guy supposedly named George Santos, who was just <laughs> Elected from New York's third district on Long Island. As you may have heard, Santos is a serial liar who's been caught fabricating virtually every detail of his life story. Every day we learn that something else about him was a lie, and now he's facing growing calls from almost everyone on all sides of the political spectrum to step down. It seems like every day we're learning something else about George Santos' life that simply isn't true. Now he's being accused of stealing funds from a homeless veteran's dying dog and lying about his mother being a 9-11 survivor. Santos has admitted to lying about graduating college and to, quote, embellishing his work history. There's a staggering amount of fantastical tales George Santos has told through the years, saying he caught a severe early case of COVID even though he was on TV four days later, or claiming to be a, quote, proud American Jew whose parents fled Hitler, even though he's actually Catholic and has no Jewish ancestors as far as we can tell from the records. He said he owned 13 different properties when he's never been a landlord. This is the same George Santos who said he worked at Goldman Sachs, which was a lie, who said he worked at Citigroup, which he didn't, meaning that too was a lie. He's the same George Santos who lied about the high school he went to in New York and the college he said he graduated from. He said it was Baruch College and he got a degree in economics and finance. He didn't. Two former Santos roommates told Patch several items went missing while they lived with Santos, including phones, expensive dress shirts, and checks from a checkbook. Also allegedly stolen by George, according to these two men, this Burberry scarf that George wore to a pro-Trump rally in Washington, D.C. More questions are being raised about New York Congressman George Santos, including if that's even his real name. An ex-roommate of the freshman congressman had this to say. I've always known him as Anthony DeVolder. I've never known him as George Santos. That's right, George Santos lied about so many things we don't even know if his real name is George Santos, which in a way is not surprising. I mean, just look at him. He looks like he's wearing a crappy disguise from the Americans. <laughs> his lies have been so numerous and fantastical, it's impossible to keep track. He even lied about being a college volleyball star, which the chair of the Nassau County Republican Party revealed in a press conference last week where he called on Santos to resign, causing the other Republican assembled behind him to laugh at how absurd it was. Told me, I remember specifically, I'm um, into sports a little bit, that he was a star on the Baruch volleyball team and that they won the league championship. And what can I tell you? You gotta love New York politics. Even our leaders address damning scandals like they're doing a one-man show at Caroline's. He told me his mother was Italian, his father was Jewish, and he was in therapy. What can I tell you? That's how ridiculous this scandal is. Even they can't help but laugh. And how can you not? Claiming you're a star volleyball player at Baruch College, no less? A public college in New York City, not exactly renowned for its volleyball program. It's a pretty incredible lie. Like, I don't even see how that lie is designed to help you. We need a candidate to run in the third district. I got just the guy. Baruch College, volleyball star. <laughs> can't lose. Also, I'm pretty sure he played quarterback at Sarah Lawrence. <laughs> the whole thing has turned into a nightmarish circus for Republicans. Santos can't go anywhere in the Capitol without being swarmed by reporters who block his every move, ask him if he plans to resign, and every time he ducks into an elevator to avoid questions. Why won't you answer our that. questions, Congressman? Congressman, you seem to be dodging be questions about your finances answers? and about your background. Congressman, have you spoken to Speaker McCarthy? Congressman, what about committee assignments? Excuse me. Oh. Excuse me, please. Do you think you're qualified to serve in Congress? 
Are you going to give any statement anytime soon? Yes, we're going to need a little bit of space here. The New York Republicans are calling you a disgrace. You will not resign. What is your response to New York Republicans? trying to get in the elevators. Man, what would this guy do without elevators? He's going to have to live in one. When he gets in, he probably just presses every single button. I have offices on all the floors. Shut the up, George. Also, check out this move by the reporter who jumped in front of Santos before he could get into the elevator. She literally... She literally did a pick and roll to a member of Congress. And remember, he's an athlete. This is what happens when you're a party of Trump. You attract con artists like George Santos. They've taken three successive elections. They spent a week humiliating themselves with the most chaotic speaker vote in a century. Two of their looniest members got in a fight in the bathroom. Two others got in a fight on the House floor. And yet another has lied about virtually every aspect of his life. And now Trump is ready to jump back onto Facebook and Twitter, which will only make matters worse. Republicans are going to spend the next two years going back and forth at each other like they're on the volleyball team. <laughs> this has been a closer look.